and Remy. The new leadership we're talking about is about what we would like to see, where we would like to go, what would work for all of us. People are hungry for a new metaphor. They're tired of the old imagery of sports and war and beating up the enemy and smashing their face and knocking them to the ground and how we can win and rah, 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 and so, you know. Finally, every say, oh, give me a break, you know. Maybe the way to think is that we're all in a symphony and that it's a symphony, symphony, sounding together, sounding together. That means all the voices of the symphony are sounding together. It's not about winning, it's about sounding together. Now, suddenly, leadership becomes a completely different thing. The new era of leadership has to do with enrolling people, enrolling people in a vision or an idea, because you're not going to be able to command them to do that. And also, you need all the resources of everybody involved in an organization. So to be able to spark possibility in each of the people who work with you gives you all of them, gives you all the resources of every person. Right, great. That was it. That was it. That's it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, I would say to you, when Schubert writes pianissimo, he means something softer than that last Das Mann does. Do you agree? It has to be softer. Softer vocally, but more intensity. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Exactly. I think everybody's interested in leadership. The question is, what kind of leadership is the most effective? I could galvanize an orchestra, but could I in, enhance, enliven, and in, um, awaken an orchestra to be the most that they could be. So the notion arose of the conductor as not the dominator, but the conductor as conduit for the possibility that people can be, as Ross says, the relentless architect of the possibility that others can be. Once again, here we go. This new leadership is about relationship, and it's on conversations. That is, what is the conversation I'm having? How is that affecting the person I'm having it with? Why do you repeat it? Why do you say das Wandern ist des Müllers Lust das Wandern? Why, 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 why repeat it? Because it's not just his joy, it's his joy! You're right! Exactly! <laughs> now do it! <laughs> we must not forget how powerful we are, we musicians. You get that? We have the whole world in our hands. We can enroll people in anything. But we have to be the possibility ourselves. We're not singing about it, we are being it. It's a huge responsibility. And you know, your face is lit up with joy. So it's not a responsibility, oh my god, I've got a responsibility. No, it's, oh, wow, that's something to get up for in the morning. Absolutely. And your face is telling the story that it's the greatest thing on earth to be a musician. But much more than that, because we can enroll people in all of life. Full, expressed, passionate. I das muss sein schlechter, one more time. Das muss sein schlecht. Here we go. Das muss sein schlechter Müller sein, der niemals viel das Wandern ein. Das Wandern, das Wandern, das Wandern, das Wandern. Jawohl, he's got it, bravo, bravo. <laughs>
Wonderful. Fantastic. teach students, I teach a class at the New England Conservatory, young musicians, and they come and they're very excited to be there and they're thrilled to be at the New England Conservatory and all that, but they're not so sure about how they compare to their next door neighbors. And when they come up and play in front of people, it looks as though there's just one person there, but actually there are two people. There's the person who's playing, and then there's the person who's standing beside the person who's playing, whispering in his ear, saying, you haven't practiced enough. <laughs> do you know how many people play this piece better than you do? That difficult passage. You missed it the last time. It's coming right up. You're going to miss it again. <laughs> it's the voice in the head, right? You all know the voice in the head. And if you're saying to yourself, what does he mean, a voice in the head? I don't understand what he's talking about. That's the voice I mean. <laughs> right. So I give everybody an A in the class. Everybody gets an A. Ben and I have a practice called giving everyone an A. It started because Ben has a graduate class at the New England Conservatory and he had a lot of very anxious people in his class and Ben said I don't know how to get by it. So I said the only way to do that is to give them all an A from the beginning of the year. So what we developed was that every student got an A and had to write a letter dated the following May saying, Dear Mr. Zander, I got my A because. So then these beautiful letters emerged, just saying exactly the person who was sort of hidden inside there, the person whom the student would be if there were no barriers, no fears, no kind of voices in the head telling them what they couldn't do. Giving the A is a completely different paradigm. It is the paradigm of possibility, and we say the A is a possibility to live into, not a standard to live up to. Rather like a fish swims in water, the environment of the class is an A. Joy, relief, ease, community, non-competitiveness, encouragement, spontaneity, risk-taking, that is the environment of the A. Fine, let's start. Great, wonderful play. Wonderful play. Everybody can make a difference from any place that they're sitting, from any role in an organization. They've been thirsting to feel about themselves that they can make a difference. All of us have encountered being stopped in something when we wanted to contribute in some way and somebody stopped us. And we then were cautious about the next thing we said. And you know, you get a few of those and it's pretty ingrained. So now people look out and say, I have to really, really, really get to know somebody before I'll trust them. Nonsense. The little old ladies, the one who like classical music, they're all dying out. There's not going to be an audience. That's a downward spiral conversation. If you think about how we talk, we're generally talking about what's gone wrong and what ought to be fixed. It's a conversation of no possibility, the downward spiral. It doesn't lead you anywhere. You see it in the stock market. Of course, you also have upward spiral on the stock market. <laughs> upward spiral and downward spiral are the same thing. Right? Wherever there's a winner and a loser, you have downward spiral thinking and talking. As soon as you notice that you're talking about what's gone wrong, what isn't right, what needs to be fixed, how they're wrong and you're right, you're in the downward spiral. The passageway out is to think possibility. It's to move forward and say, what do I want to have happen? 
And we all know the feeling of radiating possibility. It's that excitement, that energy, that the feeling that we're all in it together, the sense of awe, a sense of beauty. In the place of possibility, our eyes shine. I had an amazing discovery when I was about 45. I'm a little embarrassed at how old I was when I made this shattering realization. But I'll tell you what it was. This is what I discovered. The conductor of an orchestra doesn't make a sound. <laughs> He's the only musician who doesn't make a sound. Right? So he depends for his power, and his power is very great, and his picture appears on the front of the record jacket in various poses. But he depends for his power on his ability to make other people powerful. That was a phenomenal realization for me. Because I realized that my job was to enliven possibility, awake possibility in other people. And when I got that, I of course began to be very interested in how effective I was in doing that. And the only way I could think of doing it was to look at the eyes of the people in the orchestra around me. And if they were lit up, I could say, great, we're doing it. And if they weren't, I got to ask myself a question. Who am I being that the eyes of my orchestra players are not lit up? And so I started taking a white sheet of paper, put it on everybody's stand in every orchestra that I conducted, grown-up orchestra, children's orchestra, and the white sheet of paper had an invitation with it, which is to write anything on that paper. Somebody would say, or a young girl wrote in her sheet of paper, she said, you're not making enough crescendo before P. This was in a Bruckner movement, and the music was building up to a great climax, and she said, you're not doing enough there. And so that night at the concert, I did a huge crescendo. And she came up to me afterwards and she said, you did my crescendo. <laughs> well, of course, my dream is that every single member of the orchestra will be feeling you're doing my crescendo at every moment. I believe that is a possibility because it is a characteristic of a leader that he never <coughs> doubt the capacity of the people he's leading to realize whatever he's dreaming. Okay. Imagine if Martin Luther King had said, I have a dream. Of course, I'm not sure they'll be up to it. Shining eyes is our image for the spark of possibility having been caught. So that person is enrolled in a new vision and it's something for themselves. So it's, it's the sense of possibility in the world where there was none before.